several other issues came up during the campaign that I want to mention before I indicate my future plans in the November election. The first issue is my strong advocacy of placing Blair Mountain on the National Register of Historic Places. I think you all know uh, what happened to that. We got an approval from the Park Service to place Blair Mountain on the National Register of Historic Places. And then at the behest of the coal industry, suddenly the director of the Cultural Center, Mr. Randall Smith, put in a protest that the landowners were really against this. When we found that there were several dead people among those landowners, we naturally uh, thought that that was a real scam. Those of you in the media may have noticed during the past week that one of Randall Smith's associates, or assistants, I should say, in the Department of Culture and History, said that they are going to apply again to put Blair Mountain on the National Register. I'm puzzled by that announcement. If they intend to put it back on, why did they take it off in the first place? That's real double talk. Here's a man who wants to succeed Senator Byrd. I was elected to the U.S. Congress in 1958, the same year that Senator Byrd was elected to the U.S. Senate. And for 18 years, we served side by side. I know many things about Senator Byrd, the most important of which is he always said what he meant and meant what he said. There was no double talk coming out of Senator Byrd's mouth. And so I am very puzzled by why suddenly the Department of Culture and History has decided to make a new application. The only thing I can conclude is they hope that this might delay the process because it takes quite a while to go through the hoops to uh, get something named on the National Register. But that's a uh, piece of double talk that I can't quite understand. But keep posted, you might really be able to get the answer as to where the governor actually stands on putting Blair Mountain on the National Register, which is uh, very high on my priority list. The second issue that surfaced during the campaign was the increasing amount of drilling into Marcellus Shale. which the governor has tacitly approved by not raising the same issues that are being raised in the state of Pennsylvania about the damage being done to our groundwater. Through the chemicals that are used in the drilling, which the company uses and, and refuses to reveal publicly what those chemicals are, and secondly, of course, the brine that is pumped into our groundwater. So that in some of those areas, it's almost like being on a life raft in the 
Atlantic or Pacific Oceans, where there's water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. And I wish this administration would follow the lead of the state of Pennsylvania to understand this great damage that it's done. I call the process fracking, which seriously disturbs the quality of our groundwater. So those are two issues that came up during the campaign on which I took a very strong position. Why don't we in West Virginia follow the lead of the state of Pennsylvania and putting a stop to this devastating practice. There are two bills that have been recently introduced into both the U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives, which I want to share with you. One is called the Clean Water Protection Act, the effect of which was to put a stop to valley fills, which in effect would stop on top removal, were it enacted. And the Appalachian Restoration Act, which does the same thing, co sponsored by Democratic Senator Ben Cardin of the state of Maryland and Republican U.S. Senator Lamar Alexander of the state of Tennessee. Either of those bills would have put a complete stop to let uh, valley fills, thereby stopping mountaintop removal. 